Alhamdulillah Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih Kama yuhabbu rabbuna wa yarda Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Al-Nasihu Al-Amin Allahumma salli Ala nabiyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa man tamasika bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin Thumma amma ba'id Alhamdulillah Ma sha Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam wa sunnah All praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah. Ya ibadullah, we have a very, very important topic in front of us as it relates to a very, very important demographic from the Muslim community. And that is those issues and those affairs that are concerning our sisters in Islam, the Muslim women. The affair of the Muslim women is an affair that is tremendous as they are so vital and tremendously important. Although this class or workshop, we should say, is directed towards the sisters, it is something in which the brothers also are in need of. And it is something in which they cannot afford to miss out on. And this is because as men who may one day become fathers and husbands or who are already husbands and fathers, it is important that they know the likes of these things so that they may convey them to the women in their family. Or those who have yet to marry, but have Muslim sisters, aunts, mothers, so on and so forth. Naam, these things are important that they know so that they may convey them unto them. And it is incumbent upon the Muslim men that they take concern and have a serious concern for the welfare of the Muslim women. And that they take a serious concern in being good to them. A serious concern in treating them kindly. A serious concern with being patient with them. A serious concern with striving to make sure that they benefit. A serious concern to strive to make sure that harm is repelled from them and avoided from them. It is serious. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Istawsu bin Nisa khayra to treat the woman in the most excellent of manners, to treat the women kindly, to treat the women good. This is something which is of tremendous importance. And it is something which is vital and very vital. So I want all of the brothers to also take very close attention to the likes of these things. And as relates to those individuals who they are husbands, and fathers, and so on and so forth, then I want you to listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, firstly to the husbands. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And live with them in good. Live with the women in good. Ma'am. So those who are husbands, I want you to remember this, and to treat your wives in the most excellent of manners, and to live with them in good. For those who have yet to marry from the men, then I want you to prepare yourself to treat your wife in the most excellent of manners and to live with her in a good way. Naam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as relates to the husbands and the fathers, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, خيركم خيركم 
wa ana khayrukum li ahli that the best of you is the ones who are best to their families and i am the best to my family hadith rawahu wa tirmidhi wa ibn majah wa sahahu al albani this hadith has been collected by imam al tirmidhi and imam ibn majah and has been graded as authentic by imam al albani and the first hadith in which was mentioned is tawsul bin nisa khayra treat the woman in a most kind and good and excellent way then this is mutafaqun alay mutafaqun alay the sisters it is incumbent and also for the brothers but it is incumbent that we strive to rectify the affairs of our sisters because their place in society and their effects on society are tremendous the effects of the women upon society is tremendous the ramifications that come with their rectification are tremendous but likewise the ramifications that come with their corruption are most deadly indeed al alama al sheikh salih al fawzan hadhihullah ta'ala he mentions he says wa ma halakat mujtami'at fi as-sabiq wal lahiq illa bi sabab an-nisa fi al-ghalib he said that the societies both of antiquity and of modern times the societies past and present that they were not destroyed in most cases except by or due to the women that societies as a whole past and present for the most part the majority of the situations they were not destroyed except due to the women ma'am so this is the case as relates to what brought about the destruction of the society because the women had become corrupt then what will we think will be the ramifications if the women folk they become upright ma'am so their influence and their position is very very tremendous is very very tremendous so it behooves us to have a serious concern for the women folk because our mothers are women our sisters are women our aunts are women our daughters are women ma'am so it behooves us it behooves us to have a serious concern for them because when that demographic of the community is upright and that rectification it starts in the home when the women inside of a family are rectified then the men in that family are the first to benefit from this rectification so it behooves them to have a concern for the rectification and then as the families collectively become rectified in a side of a borough or side of a province and the like then that promise will be rectified and then as that extends to that state to whatever then that state will be rectified until 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 the whole world is rectified but it starts from the individual ma'am and then that individual has to strive hard to benefit their families so with this being the case we want to look at some of the outstanding characteristics of the believing women and we will be looking at the attributes and the description of the righteous wife the attributes of the righteous wife ma'am or characteristics of the righteous wife you can also say but in that you will find that these characteristics are not just particular to a woman who's married but some of these characteristics are universal it relates to all righteous women and then some of these characteristics they are particular to the women who are married ma'am but in any event it is that which everyone could benefit from bi ithnillahi ta'ala and it's important that we know the sisters we have passed out a number of books on your side so that you may read along with us inshallah ta'ala and if you are in need of more books then please uh, send one of these small children over and we can send more books over there uh bi ithnillahi ta'ala we handed out these books inside of this workshop 
Because we want the people to follow along, to have a pen, to have a paper, and to really benefit. Not just to come, listen, and then leave, and really don't have much to show for it. But we want the sisters to study and to go over these things over and over and over again. And that means reading this book from cover to cover multiple times. And alhamdulillah, that's good. Read it as a family. Let the women read it to the, the, to the daughters. Let the daughters, yani, take turns reading it amongst themselves. And the mother, she listen. Let the father read it to the minute. Do it as a family. Alhamdulillah, it's good. It's a beautiful thing. Also, we're not going to be able to go through the whole of the book in the, the sessions that we're going to have. So we'll cover some, and that which is not covered, then, inshallah ta'ala, you'll have the book to read from it, bihnilahi ta'ala, at your own time and at your leisure, inshallah ta'ala. Now, so I'm saying that to say is that these gifts have not come without a cost, and that cost is that we want you to study from them and to really utilize them and to use these books. So those who have received these books, inshallah ta'ala, they're new today. They shouldn't look new next week or the weeks thereafter, but we want them to be used and the like and so that you may benefit from them. And that is the cost of them. Naam, that you study and you benefit from it. We would like to start, if the sisters would turn to page 14, would turn to page 14. Sheikh Abdul Razak, Hridhullahu Ta'ala, he mentions, Wa awwal ma abda ubihi. And the first thing that I want to start with, right? The first thing that I want to start with, Ma jaa fi surat al Nisa, fi dhikr al Sifat al Zawja al Saliha. So the first thing I want to start with is that which comes inside of Surah al Nisa, which mentions the characteristics and the attributes of a righteous wife. Which mentions the characteristics and the attributes of a righteous wife. Qur'an Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Fasalihat, Qanitat, Hafidhat, Lilwayn, Bima Hafidhullah. Inshallah, we will translate it as they have it here. And we will come to see later an illustration which points us to the fact that it is a must for us to learn Arabic. In any event, it is written here as far as the translation, Therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient. And God in their husband's absence because... because of what Allah has guarded. This is how it is translated inside of the translation of the book. When one will look inside the noble Quran, he will see it translated slightly differently. Uh, and we'll come to look at that shortly, inshallah ta'ala. In any event, this ayah, it can be found in Surah An Nisa and is verse 34. So it can be found in Surah An Nisa and is verse. 34. Now, and we're saying these references because we want everyone who attends, brothers to, to memorize this portion of the ayah. It's not the whole of the ayah, it's a portion of it. But we would like at the very minimum the, that this portion of the ayah be committed to memory. Bithnilahi ta'ala. Now, that this portion of the ayah, it be committed to memory, bihnillah. The shaykh, hafizhullah ta'ala, he says, لَقَدْ أَتَى هَذَا الْجُزْ مِنِ الْآيَةِ عَلَى مَجَامِعِ الْأُمُورِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ He says that this section of the verse it has come to mention a lot, a comprehensive description as relates to this particular affair. Naam, as relates to this particular affair. And anyone who yani, is reading along, they will see some slight differences in the translation. The meaning is the same. Naam. 
because here it mentions من الآية على المجامع الأمور في هذا الباب نعم that they will find some comprehensive affairs as relates to this particular topic as relates to this particular topic استوعبوا بدلالته وجمعه كل صفة فاضلة ونعة كريم للمرأة الصالحة that in this verse, or this portion of the verse, then you see yani, from the text that which points to the fact of the descriptions of the righteous woman. That which points to the facts of the descriptions and the characteristics and the attributes and the traits the noble traits, noble attributes, and the like of the righteous woman. The righteous women. Naam. Fadallana hadha nasul kareem al mubarak ala anna zawja al saliha hiya jama'at zbain al sifatain. And it shows us that the righteous woman, and what shows us this particular text, this noble text, this blessed text, it shows us that the righteous wife. She is the one who has combined between two characteristics. She is one that combined between two characteristics. Naam. And this here, we have to stop and mention that when we look at the ayah, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ A person may have read this ayah or heard this portion or even just now. And didn't see what the Shaykh saw. Naam. Which shows us yani, another indication of the superiority of Ahlul Ilm. That because of the Ilm they have and the Tawfiq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has blessed them with from the knowledge and understanding and, and the like. That they look at the same things that we may look at but they don't see. Yani, but, 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 but they see what we don't see. They see what we don't see. And this is due to the the fadl is the superiority in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with and has bestowed upon them. And it shows us our need for the ulama. And how we have to strive to connect ourselves to the ulama. Naam. We have to strive to connect ourselves to the ulama. And this is something that unfortunately there's not a lot of attention placed upon it. Especially in these lands of ours and as of late. وَإِعَذُ billah. But we have to get back to our connection to the ulama. And we have to understand and respect the bridges for what they are as bridges. But like any other bridge, you never get caught upon the bridge and stuck to the bridge because the bridge is a means for you to get to the other side. So the translators like myself, and we are just bridges to the ulama. So it makes no sense that you get stuck on the bridge and you lose sight of where that bridge it leads. No, you connect yourselves to who? The ulama. The ulama. Naam. And you don't mistake the destination for the bridge or the bridge for the destination. In any event, the Shaykh he mentions two characteristics. So it's important that the sisters, they pay very close attention to it. And inshallah ta'ala, they will see, as the Shaykh he explains, where these two characteristics are extracted from. As relates to the ayah. Right? But I want everyone to have this upon their mind and to be thinking about this now so that they can figure out and see where the shaykh he got yani, these two characteristics from and how it was extracted from this ayah. The shaykh he mentions, he says, Al Sifa, Al Al Ula, the first characteristic, the first trait, the first attribute, Naam, is Yani Tata'alak Bisulatiha Birabbiha. That the first trait, then this is that which relates to her connection to her Lord. This is how it relates to her connection to her Lord. Naam. And you find that this is something that is general for all women, whether they are married or not. Naam. Whether they are married or not. And that is the connection in which she has with her Lord, Azza wa Jal. And the second, the Shaykh mentions, وَصِفَ الثَّانِيَةَ And the second, تتعلق بسنتها ببعلها أي زوجها and that is the connection that she has with her spouse meaning her husband 
the connection that she will have with her spouse, meaning who? Her husband. The Shaykh Ta'ala, he says, وَأَمَّا And as relates to her connection to her Lord, as relates to her connection to her Lord, فَفِقَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And it comes inside of his statement. سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى قَانِتَاتْ That they are قَانِتَاتْ وَالْقُنُوتْ نعم Because قَانِتَاتْ These are those who they exemplify the meaning of Al-Qunut. So what is Al-Qunut? Al-Qunut, and I want you to write this down inside of your books. Al-Qunut, the definition of it, huwa al-mudawama ala ta'atillah wal-muhafadha ala ibadatillah wal-tizam bita'ah بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَعِنَايَ بِفَرَائِدِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْوَاجِبَاتِ الدِّينِ وَعَدَمُ إِهْمَالِهَا وَإِضَاعَتِهَا فَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ دَاخِلٌ تَحْتَ قَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى قَانِتَاتِ He says is that what is the meaning of kunut? Then this means here that she is steady. She's steadfast and consistent upon the obedience of Allah. Right? So you can write, if this helps, al kunut. Right? Then you put a colon. And then you can put one, two, three, or A, B, C, whatever the case, whatever may help you understand better. Because what enters into it is a, is, is a number of things that Mr. Shaykh mentions. The first one, then it is what? Consistency upon obedience to Allah. That she is consistent upon obedience to Allah. Or consistency upon obedience to Allah. Right? The next one, or you could put bullet points if you want as well. The next one is that she is preservant. She's preservant and guarding over the worship of Allah. She's preservant and guarding over the worship of Allah. Naam. So she's consistent upon Allah's obedience and she's consistent or yani, and she preserves and she guards her worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Just a side point when we look at this, these descriptions, we see or well, we can better appreciate the affair of knowledge. Because this is a question I'm asking that's not rhetorical, but is it conceivable? And again, this is not rhetorical. Is it conceivable that a woman would be able to do the first two things that are mentioned, which fall under the meaning of kunut, without knowledge of the religion? Could she do it? La, right? She couldn't do it. So we need ilm, right? But that, that, that's for her. Okay, not for you, not for you guys. Could you direct her? And help her if you, if you don't have knowledge of the religion? No. Couldn't, couldn't help her and direct her if you don't know. So it's very important the likes of these things. And uh, 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 we've said it time and time before. Time and time before that it is incumbent that we are steady upon the classes that are available inside of our areas. Now, for those who don't have classes available for them inside of their area, then it is very important that they are very serious about those classes in which they have access to online. 
Now, those classes in which they have access to online. Uh, because the likes of conferences and workshops, they are good and they have their benefits. Bila shakwa, bila raib. However, an individual, the, the, yani, the true benefit, it comes by them studying shayin for shay. Shayin for shay, yani, bit by bit. Right? And this, and this doesn't come all at one time. Man rama'in jumlatan, dhahaba anhu jumlatan. Whoever tried to take knowledge all at one time, and leave him all at one time. It's like the poet, he said, al mithlu. Today is knowledge, and tomorrow is like it. That today is knowledge and tomorrow is knowledge. Okay? Today is knowledge and tomorrow is knowledge. Today is knowledge, tomorrow is knowledge. And then from the fruits and from the, yani, the, 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 the benefits and the reaps that one he would gain, you know, he would get from knowledge, he would pick from knowledge. يُحَصِّلُ بِهِ الْمَرُ حِكْمَةً Is that an individual, by way of their end, yani he will become wise, he will be, yani, get, get wisdom, yani be granted wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the wisdom is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yani, uh, the individual, he will need what? Il. Il. You understand? طيب. And then he says something which is yani, very, very, very beautiful. That the sail, you know the sail is, it's, it's like yani, the, uh, the rivers, the rivers, right? You know in the desert, in the desert, it's dry, it's a desert, there's not a lot of water there. But once in a while, the desert in certain seasons, they'll get yani, uh, tumultuous rain in that time. And in that time, there will be a lot of streams and a lot of water holes will develop when these rains come. You understand? Uh, even some of the individuals, they mention that there are a large percentage of people who drown in the desert at these times. Because when the rains come, they come and it's very strong. Right? These, these, these like flash floods, they come and it's very strong. And then oases, you know, they, you know temporary oases, they will come and the animals will come and drink from them. And so on, it's an end of it, right? And the kulli hal, the likes of this type of water that would yani, hit the desert real fast, with its speed and with its yani, veracity and so on and so forth, it's, it's, it's important to remember that what? That this same is the collection of drops. It's a collection of raindrops. You understand? Because one drop by itself you may deem, it's a drop, what do you do? Nothing, right? But if you take 10,000 drops, that's a lot, right? After a while they accumulate, they become a lot. And this is the manner of ilm. And this is why it's something that is, is, is day in and day out. Yeah? The knowledge is sought over the course of days and nights. You understand? So every day you take what? A portion. You take a portion that you can handle. And then the next day you take another portion you can handle. And, you, and you're consistent upon that. Because with consistency it becomes a lot. Al-qaleel ma'al istimrar kathir. Wa khayrun min al-kathir yanqati' Because a little bit with consistency is a lot. And is better than a whole bunch that stops. Right? Let me say that again. That consistency, consistency with, yani, or that a little bit with consistency is a lot. A little bit with consistency is a lot. And it's better than a large amount that stops. So it's incumbent that day in and day out, we take these things serious and that we become serious about the classes because without the end, then she will not have the ability to do this, nor will you have the ability to help her in this. Also, from Qunut, the next point is that she adheres to the obedience of Allah. She adheres... To the obedience of Allah. Naam. The next point in which the Shaykh mentions is that she has a concern for the fara'id 
of al-Islam. She has a concern for the obligatory duties of Islam. Wal-wajibat al-deen. And for the obligatory aspects of the religion. That she has a serious concern about the wajibat. And with Nilahi Ta'ala, if we have time, we will come to see some very, very important wajibat that are mentioned inside of a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That the women, they have to have very, a lot of concern about the likes of these things. Naam. Ala kulli hal, they have concern to do the fara'id, to do the wajibat, to do the obligatory and mandatory aspects of the religion. Naam. Which again, all of this requires ilm, it requires knowledge. The next point that enters into the meaning of qualitat and is from what is meant and understood by qunut is that she avoids neglecting or wasting, yani, uh, she avoid neglecting or wasting these things. She avoids neglecting them or wasting them. Naam. I want us to pay a lot of attention to this point that they, we avoid neglecting and wasting the likes of these things in which were aforementioned. Because when a person hears this, when a person hears this, they will say, well, no, I, I don't, that's not me. You know, I don't, I'm not going to do nothing like that. But then when you really examine and you look deeply into their situation, then we have to ask them, yani, how regular and constant are you over, uh, are you over your, your prayer? How many times last week did you wake up late for Fajr? When's the last time you prayed uh, Witter? General yeah, questions, right? How, how much are we concerned over the obligatory actions and the voluntary actions, right? These are just questions that one has to ask. Do you, do you, are you, are, are, how many times is the salat missed? For the sisters, for example, how many times is the salat missed because she's busy on dealing with social media, playing around on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, binge watching stuff on whatever website, right? Because she missed a prayer. Does that sound like someone who's not neglectful that likes these things? Does that sound like someone who's, who's you, know, you understand what I'm saying? I need everyone to look at themselves and to answer to themselves. And if they find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guided them and blessed them, when none of this is, uh, you know, what was mentioned is, is applicable to them, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding you to such and show gratitude unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we find that some of this is applicable to us, then make tawbah unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strive to be better and do better. The Shaykh goes on, he mentions, he says, all of this enters under Allah's statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala, qanitat. All of this enters into qanitat. These are characteristics that the women, they have to have, both women who are married and who are not married. Likewise, these are characteristics that what the men also have to adorn themselves with. They have to be concerned and consistent upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who preserve and safeguard yani the ibadah, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who stick to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a concern for the obligatory aspects of their religion. This is the first. Secondly, the Shaykh mentions that يعني, الآخر, another way, another direction, that second thing, what was mentioned is what? فِقَوْلِهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى حَافِظَاتِ لِلْغَيْبِ مَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ And again, we're going to translate it the way they translated it for now. And that is that they guard in their husband's absence because of what Allah has guarded. Naam, they guard in their husband's absence because of what Allah has guarded. Naam. The Shaykh says, Ay, this means, 
hafiza li haqqi zawjiha that they are preservant over the rights of their husbands wa ba'liha fil ghaib and they are preserving over the rights yani of their spouse of their husbands and spouse when he's not there when he's not around right this here as the ulama they explain the ulama of tafsir is that it means she safeguards the rights of her husband when he's not there and when he's there you understand because if the rights of the husband are safeguarded when he's not there then more so they're going to be safeguarded when he is there right if they're safeguarded when he's not present then more so they're going to be safeguarded when he is present now so this means that she safeguards the rights of her husband you understand now would she be able to safeguard the rights of her husband if she is ignorant as relates to the rights of her husband no she wouldn't be able to you understand she wouldn't be able to safeguard the rights of her husband if she don't know what they are in order for her to safeguard them and to establish them she has to know what they are kayfa taqum bi shay tajhalu how can you establish something in which you don't know about it how can you establish something you don't know and so it, it's 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 incumbent that what that we have this ilm we have knowledge so that we're able to establish the likes of these things so again and inshallah ta'ala will touch more on, on on different aspects of this but this also necessitates that part of being a good wife isn't waiting until you get married to try to figure it out but a lot of this could be done what preemptively before she gets married to learn what are the rights of the husband to learn what are the rights of the wife and this is important as well that the women and the men learn the rights of each other they learn the rights of each other so that a woman knows what to expect and how she deserves to be treated so that this way she is not put into a situation where where she can be subjected to the mistreatment of men because she is not aware and privy of her rights so she's thinking oh this is normal it's supposed to be treated not realizing that no you deserve better than that right and so on and so forth so now the man yani he knows what is upon him to do and this helps him into not falling short because if he doesn't know exactly what is upon him to do then it's going to be easy for him to miss things and likewise the sisters have to know what exactly is the rights of the husband so that they're able to establish and to give to the husband yani his rights right and a beautiful point the ulama they mention as relates to the rights of the husbands and the wives usually after explaining what are the rights of the husband upon the wife what are the rights of the wife upon the husband they mention and also from the rights of each other is to be patient with each other when they fall short in fulfilling the rights of each other you understand that's from the rights because you know what as a husband you're not always going to yani establish as it should be established the rights of your wife and when that happens what's going to happen you're going to want for her to give give you a pass to be patient and understanding that you came up short that time so now in the reverse is as well you have to understand there's going to be other times where she's not going to give you your rights as they should be established so now you have to remember how you will feel when you came up short so you have to what give her a pass and be understanding and so on and so forth this is very important and this and this helps for a successful marriage because a lot of times you find when people come with disputes in marriage you find the likes of these things come up well he treats me to a standard that he doesn't treat himself if i don't do this then he jumps down my case but he yet he expects me to do it yani you know uh, yani uh, 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 if, if i don't do this he jumps on my case but then he expects for me to let him slide when he don't do this 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 this, this. you understand and vice versa so it's a, it's a, it's incumbent that yes not we only we know our rights and we help each other in the establishment of them but also that we patient when people come up short because human beings are not perfect kulun an khata all of the children of adam they make sins they make mistakes now so this is very important the sheikh he says the woman has to guard the rights of her husband and of her spouse in his absence which of course he mean in taban and also inside of his of course in his presence she would do it as well wa kadhalika fi shahada likewise when he's present she has to guard his rights 
تحفظه في ماله. She has to she has to safeguard his property, safeguard his property, his wealth, his belongings, his money, right? His car, يعني يعني the home, you understand? His clothes, you know, for the for the طلاب العلم at the when the first of that the books, right? Say no, safeguard the books. Make sure the other stuff we get again and whatever, but safeguard the books, right? To make sure that she safeguards his wealth and has respect for his wealth. Because to safeguard his wealth and have respect for his wealth, it has to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as relates to herself. You understand? And whatever problems or diseases or sicknesses that she may have from growing up inside this society, she has to shake them off. All of that she gets mad and she empty out the closet and burn it on the lawn. No. No. Fair Allah. Safeguard the property of your husband. Right? Also, تَحْفَظُهُ فِي فَرَاشِهِ She has to also safeguard his bed. Meaning that she safeguards herself and she keeps herself chaste. She keeps herself chaste. She doesn't put herself in a situation يعني, uh, uh, يعني, where she disrespected her husband as relates to that. There's a lot of benefit in this. يعني. It's, not, it's, not, it's not suitable, nor is it from the characteristics of a righteous wife, that she's a woman who's loose, a woman who's flirtatious, a woman who doesn't lower her gaze, she's talking to men, and so on and so forth, and وَعِيَاذُ billah, what that ends up in at the end of it. وَعِيَاذُ billah, but she avoids all of these things. She not only avoids the destination, but she avoids the roads that lead to it. She, she Not only she avoids the destination, but she avoids the roads that lead to it. Now, don't go near it. وَتَحْفَظُ فِي أَنِي حُقُوقِهِ And she safeguards his rights. She safeguards his rights. وَتَحْفَظُ فِي الْوَاجِبَاتِ And she safeguards يعني, uh, those things that uh, are يعني, the obligations, the obligations that يعني, are, are, are upon her as relates to him. حَافِظَاتِ لِلْغَيْبِ She safeguards and protects him in her, or in his, excuse me, absence. نعم, very important. ثم إن هذا الذي وقع منها من حفظ الله والتوفيق الله سبحانه وتعالى because this which she does from safeguarding the rights of her husband from establishing the rights يعني that that are upon her as relates to her lord and establishing uh, the, the, the duties and responsibilities that are part of to her husband, yani all of this, being a one who is righteous, being one who is yani from yani from the qani tat and the like, all of this is by the all of this is by the preservance and the protection from her from from uh, from her Lord, from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, wa bi tawfiqillah, and by the success being granted to her from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And now this is going to bring us back to the ayah and the manner in which it was translated. Naam? And bring us back to the ayah and the manner in which it was translated. Because our understanding of this particular portion, that all of this is by the, the tawfiq, by the success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has safeguarded her and protected her and given her the success to be able to establish the likes of these things and make these things easy for her and aid her and assist her in the likes of these things. Then all of this is understood from Allah Ta'ala's statement. Bima hafid Allah. Bima hafid Allah. Naam. And that, and it's translated again, the way and manner in which it was translated here, because of what Allah has guarded. The way it is translated inside of the noble Quran, Musan Khan. Naam. Because each of these will give you a portion of the understanding, right? And this is. Yani, uh, one of the shortcomings when it comes to translating uh, things from Arabic into other languages is that sometimes the meaning is so broad and it, 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 it contains so much stuff that the translator, he will go on the predominant meaning as relates yani, to him and then that's what he will present and the other meanings he will leave so that is reader friendly, so on and so forth. Naam. But as the uh, person who is not yani, uh, just dependent upon the English, you lose out on stuff. So this is an encouragement to be serious about learning Arabic, an encouragement to be serious about the studying of the Arabic language. Naam. Al kulli hal, 
inside of the, the noble Quran, it is translated as, it is translated as, and guards in her husband's absence what Allah has ordered them to guard. Right? The portion of the ayah. And, what, and guard in a husband's absence that which Allah has ordered them to guard from their chastity, the husband's property, so on and so forth. Ma'am? So with this one, we understand the more broader context of what it means for her and those things in which she is to safeguard her husband's property, his wealth, his honor, so on and so forth. Ma'am? Wait. Right. From the other one, as, as it comes in the book, we get a better, well, we get a yani, somewhat of an understanding of the other aspect of, of, the, of, of the tafsir, this particular ayah. However, the wording, and maybe this is just yani, to me and due to my uh, weakness inside of the English language, but the, but the wording is still a little ambiguous as relates to what is the exact meaning of that which is, that which is mentioned. Because it says, guards in their husband's absence, right? But that part we got, right? Hafidhat al ghayb in the husband's absence. But then the last part, bima hafidh Allah, with that which, it, yani here it says, because of what Allah has guarded. Because of what Allah has guarded. Right? Does anyone know what that means? No, I'm not, I'm not asking any, yani facetiously, or yani, uh, rhetorically, I'm, I'm seriously asking. Does anyone understand what's intended by that? Do you? Huh? You do? You? I don't. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't understand exactly what is intended by it. I don't understand the full, any, what's, what's the scope of it, right? I believe what it's trying to say, I believe what it's trying to say is what Sheikh Abdul Razak mentions. I believe what it's trying to say is what Sheikh Abdul Razak mentions. And that is, as he mentions, that all of this that she that that uh, that uh, that 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 she's able to do, right? But by, by being that righteous woman, by giving to Allah His rights, and and being steadfast upon her worship, and being yani preserving over her her ibadah to the end of it, and by giving yani the husband his rights and so on and so forth, protecting his wealth, his property, and none of that, right? That all of this is 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 only accomplished by Allah's tawfiq, that Allah has given her the success in doing this. This is what I believe is the intent behind this wording and this verbiage because of what Allah has guarded, right? But it's not 100% clear the likes of how the Shaykh explains it. Imam Ibn Kathir, he mentions inside of his tafsir, yani as relates to Allah Ta'ala's statement, بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ He said, أَيْ الْمَحْفُوظُ مِنْ حِظِّهِ that these things are preserved due to what? Due to Allah's preserving them. Meaning that what? What the Shaykh mentions. That the tawfiq, the woman she gets, yani when she's righteous, all of that, it becomes by the success that's granted to her and bestowed upon her from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That none of this was accomplished due to her efforts like that. But this is something that Allah has blessed her with, a bounty upon her from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she's only able to do these things if what? If she has the tawfiq, if she has the success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Which brings us into another situation of which was aforementioned inside of the book, but because of the workshop and due to the time restraints, we skipped that part. Okay? We skipped that part due to the workshop and the time restraints. But if one will go back prior to this, prior before mentioning the likes of these things, Sheikh Abdul Razak, in short, he mentions that a person being righteous, a salah, being righteous and upright, لا ينال إلا بأمرين. It is not attained except due to two facts, two affairs. And this is something that we all benefit from, men and women. We all benefit from. That a person being righteous, being upright, you will only attain that with two things. The first thing, al-awwal, tawfiq, tawfiq illa. Naam? You will, all, you will only get that by having yani, yani the, uh, the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah has granted you the success of doing that. Tawfiq Allah. Naam? 
So a person being upright, being righteous, you will only attain that by Allah granting you the success in doing that. From the proofs. From the proofs. All of us should have read this ayah yesterday. Should have. Right? It would have been good if we did. Right? Never hurts. Ever. Ever, ever. Okay? That is Allah Ta'ala's statement. مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ Whoever Allah guides, he's guided. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجْرَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا And whoever Allah misguides, you will not find for him any protector to guide him. Right? Anyone know what surah that's from? There's a hint. You should have read it yesterday. Surah Kahf, now. I sent. But it's verse number 17 from Surah Kahf. That whoever Allah guides, then he's the one who's guided. And whoever he leads astray, then you won't find for him no one who can guide him. Okay? So a person being guided is by what? By the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهِ And they yani, will not wish to do it except that Allah ta'ala has already yani, wished that they had done so. So a person being upright is never something that, can, that, that is, uh, what do you say? It's never something that they can unilaterally do. No, they only do it by the permission, by the, uh, uh, the, the granting of success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the tawfiq is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? And that's the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَاللَّهِ يَدْعُوا إِلَى دَارِ السَّلَامِ And that Allah, He calls, He calls you to the abode of peace. وَيَهْدِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And He guides whom He pleases. إِلَى صُرَاقِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Until the right path. Allah calls you to the, 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 the abode of peace and He guides whom He pleases to the right path. Naam? So the guidance is but is by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without Allah's tawfiq, no one could be guided. Will be guided. Okay? Secondly, and this is very important. Secondly, this is very important. Because from the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, when a person puts his trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it necessitates and requires for him to put forward the asbab, to put forward the means by way in which something is accomplished. So as relates to going back, the portion of the ayah, بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ then Do we, we understand what that means? That she's able to accomplish and have these things and be upright due to Allah preserving, Allah preserving her. Now, and giving her the success. Secondly, as we mentioned, is from our aqidah that when a person puts their reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they still have to put forward the, the actions, those means by way in which something is accomplished. Like if a person wants a job, for example, and so on and so forth, then they'll go through the steps to do that, putting together a resume, going out, filling out applications, interview, application online, whatever the case may be. The process in which one goes through to get a job. He doesn't say, I want a job, but then he sits at home and, you know, kicks, kicks his feet up and say, but I, I really need a job, I'm looking for a job. And he just sits at home. I'll put my trust in Allah, I'm going to get a job. And he just sits at home, he don't do nothing. We'll say this person is what? It's crazy. It's crazy. Right? Uh, the Mashaykh they mentioned, they said it's like if a person says to you, Inshallah, I'm going I'm to have a kid next year. I'm going to have a kid next year. And you say to him, How? you're not even married. Stuff for love, what are you saying? He says, no, 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 brother, I'm going to have a kid next year. He says, so you plan to get married? No, no, I'm not going to get married. Stuff for love, you're going to do something foul? No, I'm going to do nothing foul, I'm going to do nothing. But I'm going to get a kid. The sheikh, he said, what would you do to that person? He said, you would immediately take him to the doctor. Immediately. Because obviously his brain is not working right. If you want to have a child, then you got to find a suitable woman to marry, get married, and then, you know, go through the process uh, and the like. But, but, but just to say, no, it's going to happen, because I'm not going to do nothing for it to happen. It's going to happen. I'm going to get a kid. Watch. 
right? Then you'll take them to the doctor and say, this person's crazy. You're not even putting forth the effort. What are you talking about? So you have to put forth an effort. And this is something that is of extreme importance for the sisters to understand and also for the brothers. It's like, it's like the, you know, the saying and the old folk they say is that anything worth having requires what? Effort. Anything worth, worth having, it requires you have to work hard at it. It doesn't come easy. It requires you have to work at it, put forth an effort you know, uh, to acquire it and so on and so forth. So likewise, if an individual wants to be righteous, right, then, he, then the sheikh, the sheikh, he mentions, he says, وَسَعِلَ insan." That a person he has to strive yani, with his efforts and in, 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 in striving to get it. Yani, so as to get rectification or yani, to be upright. <coughs> to become upright. He has to strive to be upright. He has to take the means by way in which a person yani, takes to be upright. He has to do, <coughs> excuse me, and adorn himself with the characteristics of those who are upright, which will require what? Effort. It will require effort on his part. It's not something that's just going to come like that and just happen. No, but he has to strive to do it. He has to strive to do it. So likewise, if the sisters want to be righteous, then they will what? They will have to strive to be righteous. They will have to strive to change those deficiencies that they find or that they know exist within themselves. They have to strive to adorn themselves with those outstanding and those beautiful characteristics that the righteous woman and the righteous wife is adorned with. They have to put forth an effort into doing this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one hadith that has been collected by Imam Muslim inside of his Sahih the Prophet ﷺ, he combined both of these concepts into one hadith. The concept of what? That the tawfiq is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The success is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that an individual has to put forth the effort. Has to put forth the effort. The Prophet ﷺ combined these concepts in one hadith. And that is the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ihras ala man yanfa'uk. Work hard and diligently after that which will benefit you. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what? وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And seek the help, aid, and assistance from Allah. Why? Because no matter what you put forward from effort, if Allah doesn't give you tawfiq, it's not going to happen. So the farmer, for example, he can go out to his field, he can yani, seed the field, he can irrigate the field, he can take all of the, the, the weeds away and so on and so forth. But if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala decrees that there's no yield that year, Nothing's going to grow. Nothing. But he put forth the effort, right? But if Allah don't give him tawfiq, nothing will grow. You understand? So, the effort has to be put forward, but at the end of the day, what? You need the success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Prophet sallallahu here in his hadith, he calls us and reminds us and teaches us that we have to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask and beg Allah for his help, aid, and assistance in our endeavors, and we have to strive after that which benefits us. We have to put forth effort in that which will benefit us. And with this, it is important for the sisters to know and to understand that from another aspect of what needs to be done preemptively before you get married, uh, before you get married, prior to the marriage, is that what? is that you should strive to look for a man that will benefit you. And what I mean by benefit you, I'm not talking about no dunya. I'm not talking about a man that can just pay your bills and you know buy you food and clothes and that type of stuff. No way. No way. I'm not talking about that. A lot of the problems that exist in marriage, marriages come about due to shortcomings during the process of getting married come about due to shortcomings during the process of getting married. Now, how many people, marriages yani, are destroyed, right? The marriage come and go from somebody he met online, somebody he met on Facebook, right? Then he bring her home and he says, she's not really that religious. But did you think she was? And she had on Facebook had all her pictures posted? Did you think she was religious? When you look back, hindsight, 2020, did you expect her to be anything other than what you got? 
Right? And the sister come with the same complaint. Oh, the brother, he, he married me on Facebook. Oh, the brother, I catch him on Facebook all the time. Oh, okay, what's going on? Yeah, he looking at women. I know that's what he's doing. That's how he met me. So what do you expect? Uh, but did, did, did you anticipate something? So listen, the point is, is that before the woman gets married, she should ask herself, and it's unfortunate, but it's very rare that you hear this. You ask us what you're looking for. It's very rare that you hear a sister say, I'm looking, for someone who, uh, I'm looking for someone who can help me be a better Muslim. I'm looking for someone who could, 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 could aid me to better my religion. It's very rare you hear that. Very rare. Very rare. A lot of times people are concerned about financially, what the man got financially. Oh yeah, I want a good brother, I want this, I want that, but I need somebody to take care of me. I need somebody who's financially stable. I need somebody that's somebody to uh, benefit you and to help and aid you inside of your religion. What about that? Where's that? Where's the concern for that? Because see, and likewise for the brothers, where's your concern for a sister who can help you be a better Muslim? A sister who can help you strive to get to the Jannah? A sister who can help you stay away from the fire? And so on and so forth. Where's your concern? Now, um, if our concerns were placed in the right place prior to marriage, then a lot of the problems that we see will be avoided. And I believe the divorce rate will go down. Wallahu a'lam wa a'lam. We have to be more concerned over the likes of these issues and picking and choosing a spouse to look for someone who will benefit you. When the Prophet said, Ihras ala ma yanfa'u, yani, be diligent in that which benefits you. Yes, it applies to things which will benefit you in general. But no doubt what enters at the head of that is that which will benefit your religion. That which will benefit you. So when you meet your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'am, so, uh, and, and these things are important for the righteous woman because it is easier for the woman to be able to give to her husband those rights that the sheikh he mentioned if the man is righteous. It becomes easier for her. You understand what I'm saying? Whereas if the man is not righteous, if the man is yani, you know, horrible and so on and so forth, then she's setting herself up for loss because now it becomes hard to give to the man his rights when you know he ain't giving you none of your rights. You understand what I'm trying to say? When you know he's come, yani, he's treating you in such a horrible and mean and nasty manner, it becomes difficult to now want to put forth and, 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 and give the man his rights. So the sisters, yani, you have to learn how to start helping yourselves to help yourself. And that is by choosing righteous, good husbands. That will be an aid for you in being a righteous, good wife. And likewise for the brothers to choose righteous, good women. Because that will be an aid for you to be a righteous, good husband. Ma'am? The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he goes on to mention a very tremendous hadith as relates to this and as relates to the women and as relates to the tremendous reward that she would receive if she were to implement and to fulfill the guidance that is contained inside of this portion of the ayah and that is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَ خَمْسَهَا وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا وَحَصَّنَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا دَخَلَتْ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ Sha'at that if the woman prays her five, fast her month, safeguards her privates, and she obeys her spouse, her husband, then she will enter into Jannah from any door that she pleases. She will enter into Jannah from any door she wants. Any door she wants, she enter into it from it. Naam. This hadith is tremendous and, is, uh, and, is, and, and it should be a source of concern for our Muslim sisters. But bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, we will save this until the next sitting, which will be uh, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala tomorrow morning as relates to this 
uh, topic and the other topics related to the overall theme of the uh, conference, inshallah ta'ala. We will continue with those as the day proceeds, but this will be the end of the workshop portion of the conference for today. And again, we will resume with the workshop for the children and the workshop for our beloved sisters uh, tomorrow morning, bi'ithni lahi ta'ala. فنكتفي بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرًا.